May the Lord bless every single one of you. Today we finish with the Lord's favor, the epistle to the Romans, and we will begin in chapter 16, verse 21 to 23, which are the final salutations of the Apostle Paul to his collaborators. And it says, Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, and my countrymen greet you. We begin with Timothy in this greeting. Timothy was the right hand of Paul, the one who he saw as his successor, and that later on he would be more identified with him. And let's go to the book of Philippians in chapter 2, verse 19, to read about this. And it says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have none like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. So we see here uh, the favor that Timothy had from the Apostle Paul. He identified himself with him. He had been his comfort in the afflictions, in his prisons. He had never left him. And literally, he had taken him as his spiritual son. He had a lot of trust and a lot of hope that Timothy would be the successor. We see also Lucius, who also probably was the Lucius of Cyrene, or Luscious of Cyrene. And he was uh, a teacher in the church in Antioch, who sent Paul. It is recorded in chapter 13 to his first missionary trip. And Jason could have been the one who gave Paul hospitality in Thessalonica, and he suffered um, pain in the hand of evildoers. Let's look at this part, and let's take our time. It's good for us to search, and we're going to go in this part in the book of Acts, not only of Jason, uh, but also of Lucius. And we're going to go to Acts chapter 13. And it says in verse 1, Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod as Tetrarch and Saul. Now Jason, we're going to find him in chapter 17 of the book of Acts 5 through 9 and it says the following but the Jews who were not persuaded becoming envious took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering the mob set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason Paul was there when this incident happened and he also mentions Sosipater in Acts chapter 20 verse 4 and it is so beautiful that these names were registered in the scriptures as a tribute, right? So Acts chapter 20, verse 4, and it says, And so we will find him in, in verse 4. And so Pater of Berea accompanied him to Asia also. So now let's go to Tur. Tercius. Now let's go back to Romans. And we're going to go back to chapter 16. And we are going to go to verse 22. And here it speaks to us about Tertius. And here, for the very first time, listen to this. After this long, beautiful letter of 16 chapters, we find Tertius who is identified as the one who wrote the letter to the Romans dictated by the Apostle Paul. As we can see here in this verse 22, he himself introduces his greeting or salutation to the church. He says, I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, greet you in the Lord. And so let's look at this, beloved in Christ. You know, sometimes our uh, pride makes us think that we can do the work of the Lord by ourselves. But let me tell you that we cannot do the work of the Lord without the support, without the accompaniment, uh, without the collaborators that participate in this work together with us. And this teaches us humility. We are not independent of the body of Christ and we neither can, can unfold any work in the work of the Lord without depending of in others. In Paul's life, the names of the ones who 
where his secretaries uh, were. But here, Tertius is the represent the the representative of those all those who were his secretaries throughout his whole ministry. Now let's read about Gaius in verse twenty three. It says, Gaius, my host and the host of the whole church, greets you. And now we're going to look on Gaius. And he was one uh, of the ones that Paul had baptized. The Apostle Paul only baptized two people in all of his ministry. And we, if we go to 1 Corinthians in chapter 1, verse 14, we will see the following. I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. So he had the privilege of being baptized by the Apostle Paul. And it says, back to chapter 16, verse 23, it says, um, Erastus, the treasurer of the city, greets you and Quartus, a brother. And he presents a, each one of these brothers with one word. He presents Gaius as the man who practiced hospitality. It is very honorable, beloved in Christ, as people who maintained our doors opened to the needy. And it says Quartus was a brother, and that is all. And look at that uh, description. Look at this simple phrase. But when he mentions the name brother, it means that he was a true brother, a sincere brother, a man of a fraternal heart. Thinking in phrases for every one of us, what would be said about us in just one phrase? Think about it. What would be said about you? What would be said about me? I get horrorized in just one phrase, uh, as in a way of honoring us for the the service we did for the Lord. Hopefully we leave a print that is worthy to be praised. And Perla is laughing. She's making me laugh right now. Now, beloved in Christ, lastly, we get to the last part in verse 25 to 27 of chapter 16 in the benediction. And we're going to read verse 25 to 27. So in verse 24, uh, he, um, he says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So that's where the letter ends. And now it ends with a benediction, uh, which is a praise to God. And it says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith to God alone wise. Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. We're going to look at this final benediction and what it contains. It ends with a summary of the gospel that Paul loved and preached so much. Verse 25, the gospel establishes us in the faith and sustains us firm on our feet to be able to support and handle everything that comes against us for the cause of Christ. And we are in this. And God told Ezekiel, son of man, stand to your feet so that I will speak to you. So the gospel sets us on our feet to hear the voice of God and maintain ourselves firm. The gospel of power that Paul preached maintains us firm in front of our Lord. The gospel, which means the good news, are so powerful to sustain us in front of the attacks, the wounds of the world, and the attacks of the temptations. Life can be many times very difficult for every one of us, receiving blow after blow, 
but it can also be very dangerous and many times one can fall in slippery places and in temptations. But Paul reminds us that the gospel is the power of God. It is dynamite. It is dynamis. It is something explosive, so strong that helps us to overcome even in the most worst moments of our life. Paul in this epistle tells us that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God as Romans chapter 8 verses 38 to 39 tells us. He loved us and he continues to love us and he will forever love us for all eternity. Now listen, beloved, when we most need him, though we believe that he's not with us, and though we feel defeated, and though we feel impotent, those are the moments in which the Lord Jesus is the closest to us to sustain us and to maintain us forever in front of Him on our feet. Let's remember that the gospel has its origin in Christ. Without Jesus Christ, the gospel of power would not exist. The good news would not exist. Our privilege, it is to get a hold of that blessed gospel. First for our own selves and then to share those good news of salvation to the whole world. Jesus died to give us those good news of salvation through his work on the cross to transmit to us the blessed hope of eternal life, our complete victory, which is the glorious resurrection, because he lives, we will also live. After coming to this understanding of his great victory, not one of us can continue to be the same. The gospel is for all of humanity, not just for the Jewish people, for the Jew first, then also to us. The scripture says that the light shone in the land of Zebulon, Zebulon in the land of Gentiles, those good news, those good news of salvation that came to all of us. Marvelous is the love of God, very marvelous for all of humanity without the exception of any one person. Why? Because God is love. And for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that everybody who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. In verse 26 that we read in Romans 16, that truth that was revealed. This is the revealed truth of salvation. Of salvation. And it was hidden for all ages, but it was revealed through the sacrifice of Christ, the Savior of the world. Listen to this. That revelation, that mystery moves us to obedience. Uh, obedience not submitted by force, but an obedience submitted because of love for a Savior who loved us when we were still his enemies. Verse 27, the apostle ends by saying to God alone nobody else wise be glory through jesus christ forever amen this benediction this beautiful letter ends with a praise to our father our blessed father of our lord and savior jesus christ amen I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith.
Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. We have arrived to the conclusion of the study of the book to the Romans, a magna letter or a magnificent letter that is treated as a theological uh, writing, a letter that is written with tact to deal first with the sinful condition of humanity. This letter teaches us the concept of salvation, the doctrine of faith, and the concept of total trust and confidence uh, in, to be sure of everything that the Lord taught and showed us is true. And it teaches us to be willing to accept the doctrine of salvation in Jesus Christ. We also find in this book the concept of justification, the maximum proof is demonstrated of how we can be justified. The proof is not our works because our works condemn us. The proof is the work of our Lord Jesus Christ in favor of the sinner on the cross. Paul also speaks about the concept of the wrath of God. Any disobedience provokes the wrath of God. The climax of the wrath of God will be on the day of the judgment towards the ungodly. Paul also presents those of his nation who had fallen in the false religiousness, believing that only they could be saved, though they violated the law of God. And Paul presented who were the true Jews and also the consequences and the evidence of a God without of a world without Christ. And also the end, uh, he presented Abraham, a man who believed God and it was counted to him as justice. The way of faith that leads us to salvation because it is all by grace and not by works. Faith in God makes all things possible. We also find the definite proof of the love of God. It was when he gave us his son to die for us even when we were enemies of God. Romans chapter 6 introduces us to a new life, a life of resurrection with which we can title live to die and like these we can like this we can follow after the words of jesus he who holds on to his life will lose it but he who loses it for me will gain it which shows us that we can't live however we feel like it give to god a part of our life and then to live uh, the way we feel like living uh, on another part of our life no we are called to live a life of loyalty to god chapter 8 taught us how to deliver ourselves from the life of carnality one a life governed by carnality and there's another life governed by the spirit in christ and he also talks to us about entering the family of god and talks to us about the roman law that talks about the adoption process how to become children legally and how we become heirs with christ and summarizing paul presents here the basic doctrines for the Christians of all times and shows us the rules for the Christian in relation to his fellow man, the duties of the Christian and to the state, the debts we should pay and the debts that we will never be able to pay. He warns us of the times and to be sober and that we will respect the scruples of those who are weak and the tolerance of the different points of view. And he exhorts us not to judge because not one of us are judges and all that awaits us at the end of our life is to stand before the sovereign judge, whether it is in, the, um, in front of Christ or in the throne, great white throne of judgment. And so it tells us not to dictate sentence against others and showed us the dangers in the Christian life and not to turn our liberty into um, uh, recklessness. And he spoke to us not to use our liberty to be a stumbling block to the scrupulous one. But we have to respect them because they are weak. 
but the strong ones are not going to focus in disputes trying to demonstrate that we have the truth because we have acquired spiritual maturity. It exhorts us to fraternal community that we will be an open church where everybody fits and where everybody has a place in the service of the Lord. It teaches us to be full of kindness and full of tact. And at the end of the letter, Paul centers in sharing his personal projects and his fervent desire to go to Rome and from there to Spain so that the gospel would make it to the last known place of the earth as he believed it was in Spain. Sadly, it was not possible for him to make it to Spain, but the gospel made it to Spain through the followers of Jesus Christ that had been won by the living word of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ preached through the Apostle Paul, the Apostle of the Gentiles, where he was able to reach many souls, raising up new churches and planting churches in all of Asia Minor. The last, the last warning that the Apostle Paul makes to us is that we will separate ourselves from those who bring divisions and contentions, teaching false doctrines of men and not the, the clean, holy gospel that was taught to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, the Apostle Paul makes it to Rome in chains and he was there for two years teaching in under house arrest due to his condition of being a Roman citizen, he was granted this privilege where he continued to teach, leaving us a legacy through the letters directed to the churches. His last letter was Second Timothy, where he is conscious that he is going to be executed, where he is going to be decapitated. But even knowing this, that all he has maybe a few hours left, he asks Timothy to bring his cape. He wants to cover himself. He wants to uh, warm himself and he asked for his scrolls to continue to write letters Paul an, a tireless missionary even on the way to his death he goes wearing his sandals and his cape and his scrolls to continue to search the scriptures and to win more souls for the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ beloved let's not deviate let's not go astray from the doctrines that this letter teaches us the doctrine of salvation the doctrine of faith of justification of predestination and of grace because we have been saved and everything we receive from god we receive it by grace not by our own merits and in addition to this foundations of the doctrines of the christian life he spoke to us about falling in the hands of a of a god's wrath but he also presented us the way to be delivered from the judgment of god he showed us to follow the rules against our fellow man to this the civil laws and to the weak ones and the acceptance and not to judge because they think different from us let's follow the example of our lord jesus christ who did not make an exception of people and the apostle paul and the gospel of our lord jesus christ now the gospel that first our lord jesus christ and then the apostle paul presented to us is a universal gospel and we can continue to study this book and i assure you we can continue to find much more because the word of god is immeasurable it is inexhaustible it is depths of depths beloved brothers i exhort you to continue to move forward for we have not reached it all but we press into christ until we make it to our goal and our goal is not to be famous it's not to show that we know so much because we don't know he is an inexhaustible fountain now our goal is not to hold on to this world in the vain and false riches of this world but our goal is to press into christ until we make it to the goal and to meet him i donde dice porque no me avergüenzo del evangelio porque es poder de Dios para salvación al judío primeramente y después al griego o sea a todo el mundo gentil nosotros 
Mas el justo, dice en Romanos 1.17, por la fe vivirá. No son las doctrinas de los hombres, es la fe en la obra de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Ahora pues, también eh, termino con Romanos 5.1.13, ninguna condenación hay para los que están en Cristo Jesús, los que no andan conforme a la carne, sino conforme al Espíritu. Romanos 8.1. Justificados pues por la fe, tenemos paz para con Dios por medio de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Romanos 5, verso 1 al 3. ¿Quién acusará a los escogidos? Dios es el que justifica. Romanos 8, 33. Él nos ha declarado justos. ¿Quién se atreve a condenarnos? ¿Y quién nos separará del amor de Dios? Romanos 8, 35, 39. Amados en Cristo, estemos alerta. Alejaos de los que causan divisiones, como dice Pablo en Romanos 16, 17. Recordemos siempre darle la honra y la gloria a Él, como dice, al único y sabio Dios, a Él sea solo la gloria y la honra. Amén. Por los siglos de los siglos. Nos veremos, amados en Cristo. Este, el, próximo, el próximo miércoles con un nuevo libro de la Biblia. No olvide que cielo y tierra pasará, mas su palabra jamás, nunca pasará. Bendiciones, amados en Cristo. Gracias por esta jornada. Y sabio Dios. Sea to God toda la gloria. Alone, Amen. Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Blessings. There was a man named Paul who was tested and was tried. He suffered for the gospel, God was on his side, and at the end of his hard road, he had the victory, he said, I finished my course, the crown awaits for me, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith I've been through some hard times But made it by His grace The battle's almost over I have run the race I have fought the good fight I have kept the faith Looking back through all my years, there's battles along the way. Persecution, pain, and tears, I struggle day by day. But through it all, one thing I know, in Christ is victory. And when this life is over, My testament will be I have fought the good fight I have kept the faith I've been through some hard times But made it by His grace The battle's almost over I have run the fought the good fight, I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith. I've been through some hard times, but made it by His grace. The battle's almost over.